The question is, if you feel great, do you need to take probiotics? And, I, and not everybody needs to take probiotics on a regular basis. A lot of it depends on whether or not you're getting any fermented foods in your diet to begin with. If you look at the uh, Japanese, for example, they eat miso soup almost every day as part of their diet, and they're getting plenty of probiotics as part of their diet. The Koreans eat kimchi, and then you've got sauerkraut. So if you're eating fermented foods, you don't have any digestive complaints, then maybe you don't need probiotics. But I would say the majority of patients that we see that have any kind of digestive complaints will uh, improve with probiotics. And that's not to say that everybody will, but most patients do. You know, the whole ulcer disease story is interesting in that peptic ulcer disease, so stomach ulcers and duodenal ulcers are actually caused by a bacteria called Helicobacter pylori. And it was a Dr. Barry Marshall who first described this in 1982, and he was literally laughed off the stage when he presented his findings. And it was a full 10 years later, it became uh, recognized that, ulcer, that he was right all along and the majority of ulcers in the stomach are actually caused by one of these bad bacteria, if you will. And uh, recent studies have shown if you add probiotics to the antibiotic regimen to eradicate the Helicobacter pylori, you get a significant uh, increased uh, eradication rate. The, what I would recommend, as I mentioned earlier, is that everyone take a good therapeutic multiple vitamin. When you look at multiple vitamins, there's three uh, broad classes. There's synthetic vitamins, which are basically made in the test tube. You have vitamins that are obtained from natural sources, and I think for vitamin E, for example, that's probably the biggest difference, synthetic versus naturally sourced. And then you've got uh, fermented uh, vitamins, and these are vitamins that have actually been fermented uh, in the same way you might make yogurt or you might make red wine. So why is red wine better for you than grape juice? It's got six times the antioxidants that gr the same amount of grape juice does. There's something that occurs in that fermentation process that really increases the nutritive value of whatever you're eating. And that's why it's so important to do your own, have your own fermentation chamber uh, and have the right probiotics in your gut. And that's why I list that as the first thing. The second thing that everybody should take is uh, an omega-3 fatty acid. Uh, the one that we found to be the best is a company called Nordic Naturals. You can get it at Vitamin Cottage, Whole Foods. It exceeds all the, the company exceeds all the standards for quality and purity. They have their own boats that catch the fish that go right to their plant in Norway and they make fish oil. I mean, these fish are caught for the express purpose of making fish oil. Well, what does that really mean? Well, a lot of the fish oil is obtained on the secondary market. So these boats go to the cat food plant and then they go, what are we gonna do with this oil? And it's not handled properly. And if you don't handle an oil properly, what happens? It turns rancid. And so a lot of people say, well, I, I tried fish oil and I can't take it. It makes me belch and all this, and I have all this taste. And you won't get that with the, the, those problems with the good fish oil. The third thing that I recommend is the vitamin D, one or two drops at night, depending on what your level is. For most people, one drop's enough. It will actually help you sleep that's why I recommend taking the vitamin D at night. And if you think about it, how many times have you been down to the beach or you've been down to Florida and you've been out in the sun all day and then you sleep like a baby? Well, that's because your vitamin D level rises to a certain point and that helps to induce sleep. The fourth thing that I recommend is sort of, this is sort of the foundation for just about everyone. The fourth thing that I like to recommend is a product called Zyflamind. Zyflamind is the number one selling herbal uh, supplement in the United States right now. It's made by the same new chapter company that makes the probiotics that I like. It's a blend of herbs and spices, all organic. This is the only certified organic supplement manufacturer in the world. And I think that's even more important when you're concentrating things that there's no herbicides and pesticides. But it's a blend of 10 different herbs and spices that have these natural anti-inflammatory compounds that we talked about. So it's got turmeric and it's got ginger and, and several other things. It's probably one of the most studied herbal preparations in the United States. They just completed a study recently at Columbia University looking at prostate cancer in men. So they took men that had elevated PSAs, they did a biopsy, uh, they had these precancerous prostate cells, they gave them Zyflamin, they did rebiopsies at six months, 12 months, and 18 months, and had a significant reversal of these precancerous cells. And it's rare that you see that kind of scientific investigation with a, with a natural supplement.
And so that, so if you take a multiple vitamin, omega-3, I like to recommend Zyflamind and make sure you've got the right blend of uh, probiotics. And I mentioned vitamin D, but anyway, that, that's sort of a good baseline. If everybody did that, got your vitamin D level uh, where it needs to be, took the fish oil, you would feel a lot better. The Zyflamin is very good for arthritis. It's anti-inflammatory and it'll maybe slow down the aging process. We know that it, in this one study, it worked for prostate cancer. I would guess if the, when the studies come out, it might 